Call to order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Welcome to our August 29th Stewart and School Committee meeting. Has uh, anyone signed up for open forum? Okay. Consent agenda. I can have a motion for approval. Oh, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Mr. Rurick? Yes. Uh, resignations, retirements, leave of, of absence, Cyber Patriot Advisor, Tiverton Middle School, Jay Zaro. Appointments, Interim Assistant Principal, Tiverton High School, John Devolve. School Nurse Teacher, Cassett Elementary, Denise Duarte, and part-time lunch recess aide, Ranger School, Melissa DeSantis. Dr. Wacken? Yes, Mrs. Black. Um, I'd just like to say welcome to all the new people and the Cyber Patriot team. We know how awesome that was at the middle school. We had five teams, and I hope that this can be on the next agenda, Cyber Patriot, with Project Lead the Way, please, so we can see where we stand with that and get that funded so we can do it at the high school and the middle school because after they got all those trophies and awards, you'll all remember that year we said let's have it at the high school and it was planned to go up there and I don't know what happened but um, Mr. Zara was amazing and I hope that once we reorganize all this that he'll think of coming back and because there were three girls teams and those are free and then two boys teams and it was like all over the state they were talking about it. Those are the warriors of our future, let's be honest, and we want to keep that going. We don't want it to go away, so please, if we could put that on the next agenda. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think uh, we're getting crowded already for the 12th, but certainly on the 12th or the 26th. Um, correspondence, none. Uh, item 7, Policy Development Revision and Review, Policy 1076, Advertisements. Second reading. Yes, the uh, the change uh, since our the first reading, uh, and we talked about it at our meeting last week, was uh, in the second sentence in the second paragraph. At the high school uh, during the fall sports season, uh, we added fall sports season revenue generated, and the verbiage didn't change. Um, we did add a second sentence uh, or a new sentence after where it says cheerleading team. It reads, during the spring sports season, 100% of the revenue generated from advertisements on the athletic fields uh, will be allocated to the athletic department. And that's what we discussed at our last meeting, and it's reflected in the policy draft. Can I have a motion for approval of the policy? Um, I, I make a motion to approve the policy. Okay, we need a second first. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay. Mr. Mayor, do we know how much we're going to charge for the banners? I believe that is something we have to work with that's left up to us to determine what the price is. We'll work with Mr. Murray and whoever else wants to. We don't have a set price. Yeah, I will talk to Mr. Murray about that. We don't have a set price yet. We will. Okay. Anybody else? Mrs. Palish could not be here tonight. Uh, I don't think she had any other objections or concerns. She wrote it. She helped write it, so. Yeah. I, I do want to recognize Mrs. Polish for uh, all the work that and the research she put in to formulating this policy. I mean, I, we worked hand in hand, but really she did an awful lot of research, as did Superintendent Rerick. Um, and it, it, a lot of back and forth, so it, yes. it's, it's new for our district, and, and I sincerely hope that it turns into a, a good, positive thing for our, our, our athletics and, and other um, activities as well. Okay, yes, thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Item 9A, discussion and approval of general contractor to perform the renovations at the high school and middle school. Yes, the uh, school, uh, the building committee is recommending uh, that Alborg 
uh, Construction Corporation's bid of $13,555,000 uh, to serve as the general contractor to perform the renovations to the high school and middle school be approved. Uh, Mr. DeQuatro is providing, uh, in case anyone needs a copy, you have these in your uh, binder. They are the work schedule for the roofs at both schools as well as uh, the uh, HVA systems uh, at both schools. Um, in order to uh, get the bid uh, to the number that you that is being recommended, um, we've had discussions, the building committee, um, with the contractor uh, regarding um, the project. And in order to perform, if you look at the schedule on, on both the HVAC and roofs, um, we've had discussions on, uh, or the proposal came to us that uh, Al Borg would need to do some of the work during the school day for um, both the roofs, which would occur in the fall, and then the HVA systems that would uh, occur in the spring. And there'd be more de work done in the roofs, but once school got out. Um, so we wanted to bring that to the committee's attention because that's a little different than what we had originally discussed for uh, quite a bit of time that we thought we could get the work done all during the two summer months. Um, that didn't come to pass. Um, I'm recommending uh, that the committee accept the recommendation from the building committee. I, and Mr. DeQuatro is here uh, to answer any questions you may have regarding the, the bid and or the scope of the work. We had meetings last week <clears throat> with Alborg, Mr. DeQuatro, um, Dr. Dias Mitchell, uh, Mr. Ashley, the two ADs, to talk about how this might possibly impact not only instruction but also our athletic teams and our PE classes. And um, we came away uh, convinced that there'd be minimal impact um, on either the teams and or instruction at both schools. So I'll ask for a motion for approval. Can I have a second? A second. Okay, any discussion? Um, yes, Ms. Dr. Larkin, um, thank you. So we've been through this before, Mr. Rear. Yes, we have. A few times. And um, we've also been through with this company. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're confident. And the building committee, I, I think, is fabulous. I'm trusting their, yes, their work the, and their judgment. That's an issue that I brought up, you know, having, as you said, you know, gone through it. Mm -hmm. um, we have assurances from, the, it's a different company, <coughs> same name, but uh, different principal. Okay. Um, and we're comfortable in the building. And, you know, Mr. O'Dell and yeah, Mrs. Zemeca here. Okay. So um, we did have the conversation. About we're comfortable that, that they'll. Okay. Uh, my other question was, I'm sure you thought about the safety of the students. Mm -hmm. They'll never be alone with these people, right? I'm no, the students, the, the, the employees, uh, I'll let Dave explain the schedule to you, but a lot of the work will be done, um, some of the work, especially the HVAC work, will be done after hours uh, exactly. in the evenings or weekends, so it won't be done during the school day. A lot of the roofing uh, will be done during the school day. But obviously they're on the roof, and Dave can explain to you what protocols we will have in place. So we're going to incorporate a badge system where every person is going to have a number or a badge. So the person, if they misbehave in any way, you'll be able to get their number and report them back. Okay. So you don't have to say that person. Right. And they'll all be so vetted. Uh, okay. They'll all have the, uh, the company ECI. will produce uh, background checks for us on all the employees that will be working on site. Okay. That needs to be produced before the work is, is started. And I would assume they'd be limited to the areas yes. where they're assigned Right, to where work. they'll be working, that's correct. There'll be regular construction meetings where the principal, the superintendent, the assistant superintendent are all invited to that. And it's a two-week look ahead, so you'll be able to know what's going on two weeks in advance, where the areas are, if there's any changes and modifications, what are they. So there's also a building committee every month. They'll get an update of what's going on uh, as far as the schedule and progress of the project as well. And I, I want to thank you for all your hard work, the building you're off. No. Turn yourself off. I, I know, but I don't know how to work it. It's a little, the, no, sure. Okay. All right. So anyway, um, um, I, as I said, I want to thank you all for your hard work. And I just want to say I'm happy we're going to start this because when we voted for a bond in 02 and I ran in 04, everyone said I'm not voting for 04 because you didn't do 02 yet. So the people like to see when they vote and pledge their money that it's getting done. So this is wonderful that you're starting it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This also 
with regard to the general contractor and you know the fact that it is a change in principle, it's a different company than did the work on Ranger and the other schools. It's also uh, you know in the bidding process, we needed to come uh, within a certain number. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they suggested we do was to not bond the work, but we rejected that, and and so the work is bonded as well. So there is yes. backup so to uh, unforeseen mm -hmm. events after the work is done. Okay, thank you. And I'd also like to thank, especially Miss uh, Mrs. Simic, Mrs. Uh, Levesque, and uh, Mr. Odell for all of their hard work and invaluable insight. Not to mention Mr. Mendes and the other and the principals, Dr. Dias Mitchell and uh, Mr. Ashley. So, I just have one yep. more question. Sure. With regard to the roofing work while students are here and in session, will there be any noise issues with the construction vehicles, with people walking on roofs? Well, I, we do have tonight the actual roofer here, Joe McKenna, McKenna Roofing. It's the bulk of the work. It's uh, probably more than 50% of the work. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Glenn didn't show. Glenn called me up. He's in traffic. There was an accident on 195. He's due here any minute as well. But I don't know, Joe, if you want to talk a little bit about some of your actions, some of the, the process, went up. Hello. Um, yeah, I think that most of the demolition work uh, will be done before school begins. Um, any of the hoisting of material and discarding of the old material will be done before and after students uh, and faculty and pedestrians are here. Um, we will only access the building from the exterior. We will not have uh, the need for any electricity or port john facilities. Um, we'll have exterior uh, egress. Um, so I don't anticipate a lot of disruption at all. Um, probably going to need an idea of when the buses and, and so on, when everything begins, but predominantly, most of it will be done. Um, I don't know if you can hear foot traffic now, if somebody was up there now, but it shouldn't be any more than what you currently hear now. Okay. And with regard to the yep. quote, the price quote, where where does that put us within the, the whole project budget? Are we it, right it, on target? It gives us... Yes, it gives us about $800,000 in a contingency fund because we've had to, we backed out our costs uh, for RGB mm -hmm. and then uh, the bid, we, it's about 800000 right, the last time we left it. So this would leave us with about $800,000 for, uh, for any unforeseen issues. Okay. Which is about 7%, Dave, of the project, yeah, which is... A little higher than five, which is the norm. So, uh, Glenn Alberg just showed up. If anyone had any questions for the general contractor, he's here tonight as well. I'm good. General contractor questions? Yeah. Right. I apologize for being a little tardy. Questions. <laughs> there was an accident on the Washington Bridge that set me back a little bit. But I'm Glenn Alborg, Alborg Construction Corporation. Just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm here to answer any questions that you may have about the construction or the schedule. Okay. Mrs. Black? No, they've been, been answered. They've been answered. Anyone from the public? Uh, we're looking at a total duration of approximately 14 months, uh, start to finish, from when we get started. We should be substantially complete. Uh, with new heating systems uh, completely operating uh, by October 15th of next year. Uh, roof should be completed uh, by August of next year, if not sooner. All the new roofs will be completed by the end of the summer. And one of the other is issues that uh, we worked with uh, Glenn on is that they will be patching the areas uh, in both schools where we have immediate leaks now. Mm -hmm. So that and no more damage will be done until they can get to, for example, the cafeteria here at the high school and other areas will get patched. So it will, again, we'll stop any That's further good. damage until the work can get Perfect. done per the schedule. Okay, we have a motion for approval on the floor. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.
Great, thank you. And what I'll be doing is sending the contract uh, forward uh, to Attorney Robinson and assuming everything's good with the contract, we'll start up ASAP. Okay. And I have to sign that at some point? Or you sign that? Or uh, you'll probably have to sign it. All right. <clears throat> Item 9B, request for middle school co-ed soccer team approval. Yes, you have a uh, request uh, from Jeanette Lopes uh, to be uh, for consideration to begin a co-ed soccer team at the middle school. Uh, I spoke with Ms. Lopes this morning. Uh, we are finally able to uh, get in touch with each other. And um, we uh, talked about uh, her proposal, and um, she's done a lot of work on it, and she wants to share you. with you what uh, she has. And uh, I have some information that I was also able to find out about the pr you know, proposed program that we probably should talk about as well. Okay. Folks? Mic on. Sorry. There you go. One of the things I was thinking of with middle school sports after talking also, I, I know Mrs. Mitchell also did with Senator Edwards, was that there's lots of research that shows that education, great education goes along with athletic programs, but not only athletic programs, after school programs as well. And I can share that I am a product of it. I started playing basketball when I was five years old and it got me through middle school, high school. I got a scholarship to play college basketball and I graduated with a 3.8 GPA because of sports how much I wanted to play. So that's what started driving me. And about a year ago, I came out of church one day and ran into Mr. Doug Reed, who is the Tiverton Youth Soccer Director of the Competitive League. And he said, well, why don't we have anything at the middle school? So at that time, I actually started investigating it. One of the things that we're dealing with with Tiverton Youth Soccer, because a lot of people will come out and tell you, well, we have a league, is that it's not really inclusive because sometimes what happens is certain kids get cut from the team for certain reasons or whatever. But in addition to that, the Soccer Rhode Island has put forth this new rule that has a lot to do with uh, birth year. And so this year, a lot of kids, I want to say about five boys and three girls got cut because of their birth year. So there's nowhere for them to play unless they want to spend $3,000 to play club teams, which is just not feasible. So um, I, I began really to really investigate this. And so you'll see as of my agenda, we tried to break it down so that we could cover everything that could possibly be of a financial burden, and we tried to take care of it. So if you look at the agenda, um, the first thing is um, a co-ed team. And my, my also my theory is to, when we have a coach, which basically it would be Coach Ed Mello who said he would do it on a volunteer basis. Um, he is also right now certified, so we wouldn't have to worry about anyone who's certifi certified, and he, he already helps out at the high school level. So he has all of the certifications and years of experience. And my policy that I'd like to see is what we call a 50-50 policy, because if it's co-ed, we need to make sure that the girls and boys are getting equal time. So if they instill it at the beginning when you have that parent meeting or that meeting with the kids, you let them know it's 50-50. It's our first year there if we do get across, so we're not looking at a win-loss situation we're looking at the kids just getting exercise having fun and and really you know participating in the sport um, the second thing was the uniforms um, I've been working with Silver Design for years they actually do my summer uniforms for my girls basketball team I'm the varsity uh, girls coach at the high school and because I have this great relationship I've known him for about maybe five years because I, I worked with him um, he said that he could really work with us for uniforms if we wanted to do um, parent donation. So if you could please change that last word to donation. Um, he said home, away, and shorts, jerseys, for only $20. And um, I do have a petition here with over 40 signatures of parents who are in agreement that they would make that type of donation for our children. The third thing is the field. I had an extensive talk with Bob Murray, who is the AD at the high school who told me that they do not use the lower baseball field at all at the middle school and that's so much space that they, get, they can practice. In addition to that, they have six nets at the high school which two of them we can use. Um, one of them is a little damaged which um, we did have someone who's an expert in, in the nets and can get it fixed. Um, but we would consider even taking the worst of the two nets down there just for their practice. Um, and in regards to equipment number four, we would need the soccer balls, the nets, and, and the uniforms. And if, so if we have the nets, 
then again, we're looking for parent donation, which um, all of our children now who play have their own ball. So it's, it's not, that's not difficult to get four or five soccer balls to each practice. Um, in regards to the schedule, we've had several conversations back and forth with the RIPCO um, president. And the last communication was just about maybe two hours ago with Steve Schreiner. And he said, because it is our first year, um, he, he said the only precedent we have with co-ed is Little Compton. They do co-ed as well. And um, he said that we would consider this what we call a, um, a scrimmage year, where we could have eight games, six to eight games, and they would be um, scrimmage games. But, um, and then if the coach and the AD want to reach out to other teams, they have the ability and the capability to do that. So they will kind of put us on for this year. And it starts the second week of September. Um, also, they are considering putting all of our games away so that we don't have to worry about home field. Uh, in regards to busing, what we really looked at was um, donations. And on our signature, on our petition, we have several um, people that actually own companies and run companies that they are sustainable donations that said to us that they're going to be sustainable donations for each year. Even one company who said um, it's the Fishbowl and Full River that their child is only in the fifth grade but they will still and that you know that uh, middle school sports start at sixth grade said that they would also make a, um, a maximum of a $500 sustainable donation each year in addition to um, Gilbert's Jewelers in Fall River who said that he would make an $800 donation and um, Amy I have to say this right, I apologize, Gus, Gus Gasminski. Thank you very much. <laughs> she, stated, she stated that she also works with um, L LCC Fleece and Concord Electric. And Concord Electric has actually went to their CO because they're trying to make a sustainable, and they have no relation to um, the school which is great because that's going to be a sustainable donation every year as well. So she's waiting to find the amount that they want to donate to us. Um, so, you know, minimum, even if it's only 500, again, it's sustainable income every year so that we can present to the school committee basically zero funds to get this going. So that was the issue w with, the, with the busing was making sure. So at this point in time, we probably do have enough in donations to maybe cover the six or eight games for this year. And my hope is to, you know, take the hat off and pass it on to the parents in years to come because we will have at least three sustainable, but maybe we can get more, and including Senator Edwards who told me that I can't necessarily tell you it's sustainable income, although you'll get it every year, he said, because it's a legislative donation. And because it's a legislative donation, it's not sustainable, but they are going to look. He said it could be anywhere between two and $5,000. So I just think, you know, he said what, what he would normally do is just turn it over to the school department and then um, it would be divvied up between the sports teams. And the last thing on the list is referees. Right now um, from the RIPCO um, president we have it's about 30 to 40 dollars per game. So if we do have around eight games you're looking at around anywhere between 300 and 400 dollars. And again with the consistent donations we have we do have enough to cover that but in addition to that had conversations with parents who signed the petition who are saying well that would only be around 15 or 20 dollars per parent why can't we just do parent donation so all in all if we're doing looking for parent donation between uniforms and refs they're not looking more than 40 dollars which i think the parents who kids play competitive soccer with my children can tell you that we've paid hundreds of dollars for one season so this is you know a drop in the bucket so um that is our plan. I think that the reason why we've had a lot of folks say, well, why soccer and not anything else? Um, the way we looked at it with you know, baseball and softball is you'd have to do two different teams. If you do co-ed, it's financially feasible to do. In addition to that, um, soccer, I believe soccer is the best option to start after basketball and cross country because considering both cost and then the number of available talented players is significant. So it, it brings costs down because of if we're looking for parent donation, we have an abundance of kids for parent donation. Um, so that's why I think that soccer is probably the next best sport to begin. Next, um, do I truly believe in all the other sports? Definitely, I'd love to see a softball team, I'd love to see a baseball team, and maybe even you know football or track. And so my comment is I really invite all the parents to get in involved the way we have 
and, and seek out those, those funds the way we have so that those other sports can also, you know, begin in the middle school as well. Thank you. Mr. After, <coughs> after my uh, conversation with Ms. Lopes, I called the, uh, I I'm probably have the title wrong, but I believe it's the associate director. Uh, this league comes under the Interscholastic League and they assign principals and vice principals to, to run them. And the person that runs soccer um, is the assistant principal over at Thompson. So I called him because his number was on the website and I asked, because uh, I had some questions about co-ed because what Ms. Lopes is proposing is uh, by co-ed I, I originally when I before talking with her I thought co-ed was we were going to have a boys team and a girls team and they would both travel together this proposal is that we would have a mix of boys and girls playing boys teams of other schools not mixed teams according to Ms. Mr. Campion or the person who I spoke to okay. um, and he, he, and again, this is something that we would have to get clarified. He said that it would be 10 to 12 games and they would all be away games since we didn't have a home field um, to play on. And um, so that's just something that I would have to clarify. Also, he said that uh, it would be another day or so before he got uh, approval uh, to add us, to consider us, because uh, they do have the request um, and he said it would be another day or two before we got official approval. Um, you know, if we were going to do it, um, it would be a couple days out. Um, so the question or the concern, and I spoke, I see Mr. Dakota's here. I met with him and Mr. Schreiner earlier this summer as well. And the issue uh, from where I've been or sit is I'm in favor of all, anything that we can do for our kids um, after school, athletically or otherwise. Uh, any type of extracurricular activity. However, um, the issue that we have is that the committee has to take under consideration, or I ask you to consider, is the sustainability moving forward. Mm -hmm. Currently, we are now funding three teams at the middle school, um, at the boys and girls basketball team and the cross country team. Originally, uh, the parents from the different groups came before previous school committees and said, we'll sustain it, we'll have the money. Well, as, as the parents' children graduate, the enthusiasm to fund diminishes to the point where I met with Mr. Schreiner and Mr. Dakotas this summer, and I told them, I said, we'll take care of and we'll cover, and we've been covering what the boosters can't generate to cover. But right now, there's three teams that we're essentially paying for now. Plus, w w boys and girls lacrosse started the same way at the high school. Parent volunteers, and again, they're great programs, but they've been absorbed by the district. So you need to take that under consideration as well. Whatever, uh, the co even if they get, we can get the confirmation for all the different things, you know, A, will we be let in the league? How many games will it be? You know, if we get all that straightened out, the bigger question is, do you want to add another team for this purpose? Because our practice, and I'm not saying it will be with this program, but for the previous that I just mentioned, we have added them and absorbed them into our budget. And once they get absorbed into our budget, that means they're also subject to being reduced. And we, we, are, we are facing a fiscal cliff next year we got a dollar this year. I, I'm not confident that it won't happen again. I'm confident that it probably, unfortunately, will happen again. So then how are we going to make up a half a million dollars or whatever our number is to balance? So you can't make, I ask you to, this decision isn't made in a vacuum. It's not just a standalone request because on the merits, it's a great request to get our kids involved after school. but you need to consider all of that. So okay. that's what I have to say. Thank you. Dr. Dias Mitchell, anything to say? Thank you, Jeanette, for all you've done. Um, I did propose a soccer team for a few years in a row, and let's face it, when we, when we get a buck more uh, the previous from the previous year, we have to look at sustaining what we already have. 
Superintendent Rarick is correct. Uh, my five years here, we have absorbed, I would say, maybe 75 to 85% of the costs of cross country and basketball happily, um, with grants also from the legislature and fundraising from the boosters. Um, I've eaten a lot of cookies, or a lot of cookie dough. I'm a soccer mom, you know, in my day, so I'm all for it, as you know. Uh, there's a lot to consider, a lot to consider. I think we forgot about league fees. That's another component here. Um, so and, and I'm sorry, just to follow up, with the, the fee rang a bell. Uh, Mr. Campion said, I asked him, what are the referee costs? You know, you need two referees. He said the rate is 50 to $55. That per game. Per game. So when we, if this happens and we go to Bristol, uh, kick a mule, they the coach would need to bring a check and give it to whoever is running it over there. Um, also, um, just quickly, and I apologize, Laurie, the uniform issue. We have to. The uniform mm -hmm. issue. The donation would, based on our policies. My interpretation is that the, pol the, the money would have to be provided to us ahead of time because the kids have to have the uniforms. We can't say, um, Bobby, you, you have to pay now. They have to be able to, we have to be able to provide it. Right. We can't, it's right. not a pay to play state. And, and right. has to be completely paid. Paid. Right, and, and it's one thing if, if the parents right. donate the money, that's great, and they put it all in a big lump yes. sum, that's fine. Um, but the money would have to be Right. You know, right. to the school department, uh, and again, those are the f the finer pieces. I'm, right. I'm sorry, Lori. I apologize. No. So no, no, don't worry about it. Um, we did have a very robust intramural program a few years ago. Jeff Heath, single-handedly, um, oh, he had a lot of help as well. But he, you know, it really was his brainchild. That was really um, a wonderful program after school. It cast a wide net. There were um, no issues with you know, transporting kids. All kids had access with our late buses, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. It was free. We did ask for a donation. Um, so that's, I think, an option you know, to start with. I'm a yes person. I'm a half glass full. Uh, but rubbing nickels together to float cross country and boys and girls basketball. Um, Steve Schreiner will attest to that. It, it really has fallen on Steve and the boosters, uh, my secretary, Larry Luby, and I to uh, administer those. And I've even gone to Dick's and bought the wrong size basketballs. I did not know girls had a different size. Uh, so, you know, um, I, I want to say yes, but. Uh, maybe think about an intramural program where all of our kids, five through eight, can be on teams. They can get rides home. It's free. It's equitable in terms of access. No kid needs a ride anywhere or a ride back from an away game. Um, it's the most bang for our little bucks. Okay, so at this point, in order to proceed with discussion on the part of the committee, we need a motion on the floor. Would anyone care to make one? Uh, yes, I'd make a motion to approve this with more discussion. Thank you. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, so um, Mrs. Black, any No, I'm not starting. Huh? That's it? That's it? I said I'm not starting. You're not starting. Oh. Well, alphabetically, I thought. All right. <laughs> Elaine, here. Reverse alphabetically. Jeanette, um, how many sign-ups or how many possible sign-ups do you think you'd have for the program as it stands now? Parents who well, are interested? Well, I have over 40-something on our petition, but I, after a long discussion with Mr. Murray, he thinks that there's a possibility of kids leaving cross-country to come over to soccer. We have a, a, an abundance of soccer players. Right now, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, I know that there are 10 to 12 girls that um, are in well, the eighth grade mm -hmm. competitive division. And then there's probably, I want to say the two U14s we have are 13 and 13. So that's just 26 girls. Okay. And that's not counting the boys. So our thought is we can at least have anywhere between 30 and 40 kids actually just sign up. And that's 30 and 40 parents that are willing to donate, that are on here that are willing to donate. Signed your 
sign the petition and willing to donate for uniforms and for referees. Well, I'm, I'm going to take as signing the petition as a, you know, a positive support, but not necessarily joining the team, I would guess. Well, it can't be if we're going to do tryouts, but what it was is when I, when I had the folks sign the petition, I made sure it was very clear that we, you know, that the school does have, the school department has a policy and a no pay. Mm -hmm. And I said, we are looking for donations, and that's why all the other donations came out of it from Fishbowl and from Gilbert's Jewelers and from Elsie. Elsie um, Fleece and Concord Electric was because we were looking for those sustainable donations so that it would come every single year in addition to letting the parents know we're looking for you know parents to step up and donate so that we can actually when the, when the you know when my daughter is out I have another son coming up and my goal is to be there and for sustainability so that each year where we are donating our money for uniforms and our referees and then my hope is in regards to the uniforms it's the same thing that we saw with the girls you know, basketball and the high school soccer team is I want to leave the uniform there that my child has when they go up to the high school. So then it decreases. It increases our resources, but decreases the need for further donations in that area in the future. And most of our soccer uniforms, I want to say my daughter still has the one that she had from U12 because I got it big for her. So um, pass the donations down, the uniforms down, keep them there so that the kids coming up don't have, the parents don't have to make that type of donation, which opens up more donations towards refs and other materials we may need. Okay. How many um, team members do you, would you anticipate being on the team? Because it's co-ed, I can see it being at about 30, and um, they don't have roster rules necessarily, and I know that Little Compton has a bunch because they do co-ed as well, mm -hmm. and they have high numbers. So I could probably picture it being anywhere between, you know, 25 to 35 kids. Okay. Can you, you had mentioned something about this being a scrimmage year. Can you gloss that for me a little bit? Yeah, that's why I was a little concerned with the discussion that Mr. Eric had with the um, soccer director, I believe, because um, Mr. Schreiner and myself spoke to Jared Vance, who is the, the president of the RIP GOA. He's Bob's supervisor. Okay. Campion runs the the soccer the middle school soccer and okay. Jared Vance. he runs all the soccer yeah so it, he's one up on the food chain and what he told us is that it was going to be a, scr a scrimmage year for us if they could add us it would be what we call the scrimmage so it would be non-league games we'd still have about and he told me about eight non-league games so does that mean it just doesn't count in the standings or doesn't count in the standings which to me thinks mm -hmm. you know you divide a team and you it doesn't no, count against around. the team it, it you claim yes it they doesn't, don't, doesn't okay. go against their league right. record right it got doesn't it. go against their league record but it gets us involved it gets us in the in the in the league so that in the next year um it'll be a little bit easier to be formally placed in the league and have scheduled games okay and in addition to that i, I do want to express that i um i am a soccer mom as well and I have three kids that, that play soccer, and, and I'm a basketball player, so this blows my mind. Um, but they, they, the girls, a lot of times, because of these new um, rules with Soccer Rhode Island, they play with the boys a lot, a lot. And uh, my son's uh, U14 division a couple years ago um, ended up losing about three or four players towards the end of the year, and they took on five of the girls who unbelievably outplayed the boys. I have no concern, and I'm sure a lot of parents can speak to it today. We have no concerns with our young ladies playing with these young gentlemen. Okay. Um, Blaine, anything else? Did you have something? After, yeah. Okay. Yeah. She wants to go I, okay. I, I just, I don't know, I, I just, the, uh, depending on how you vote, if it's a move forward, or if you're thinking of voting in favor, the the question about the money for the buses and everything has yeah, to be to that. that has to be solidified. Yeah. And when we're talking about okay, this year's a scrimmage year, and again, um, that's you know that's great. Well, what's next year entail? Is it going to be a boys girl? In other words, what does that yeah. lead to? And then what costs are associated with that? Because if you're going to have two teams, if you're going to have a boys-girl team, then you got to have transportation for two separate, because one team will play home, the other plays away, then where do you play your home games? Because right now, uh, the practices will be held on the baseball field mm -hmm. up here at the high school. Um, but that's not a soccer field. So those are all, uh, there's a lot of questions that, you know, that we need uh, some answers to at some point.
This is Farmer. This is a tough one, mm. John. Uh, I, I, I actually last night tried to do a little bit of research as I was preparing for today. It, you know, the thought came to mind, well, what if these kids that aged out of Tiverton Youth Soccer, maybe we could put them on the JV at the high school? I mean, I we've <laughs> already come up with things, you know, and it didn't. Yeah, we've already researched that, and yeah. we were told no, and I don't know if um, anyone from. That was what I found in my research. The school middle That's school good. plays. Middle school, you, you can't, Has to be can't play grade. at high school. Yes, yeah. through eight, nine through 12. I learned, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I was looking for, for anything. I, I really do like the idea potentially mm -hmm. of rethinking this and opening up as intramurals for five through eight, which would encompass, give the ability for all of the children in that age group the opportunity to play. It's not a competitive league, so they wouldn't be cut. Obviously, the cost could be much more contained if you are keeping all of your games right at Tiverton Middle School or whatever, you know, wherever it's decided that they need to be. Well, would we be able to have the games in intramurals because we don't have the field? Because Bob Murray told me we have no access to um, the soccer we, field. We have fields, fields, you don't, fields. But no. You don't have access in the fall. All the fields are taken. taken. What about the elementary school? Well, no, now you're talking then about middle school. We'd be talking about traveling as well. But I would like to think we could work something out. I mean, I do too. We, the issue is something that needs time to, to examine. Well, exactly. Um, exactly. And as I talked to uh, Mr. Dakotas and Mr. Schreiner, one of the big issues is field. Never mind cost, but just from a practical standpoint, assuming everything's great and we had a pile of money over here and, yeah. you know, where do they play? That, that's, that's the issue. Yes, we have fields at Town Farm, but they're middle school students. We would have to transport them, whether it's even if it was just for games. We had to do this for the girls' base softball team when uh, they didn't have a field to play on. We had to transport. We had to have a bus take them down and back if they didn't, if they didn't have rides, because we we provide it. Rhode Island, if you provide the sport, you got to provide the transportation. Okay. So if you're pra if you're practicing a playing there, you have to have the students transported there. I've talked to Attorney Robinson today, again, just to refresh my memory, and he said there's two things if you wanted parents to drive, the district would have to do. One, call the trust and see what, because the, they're our insurer, to see what they have to say. And then secondly, he said, if the trust gives you a green light, you then have to have a policy to vet who's driving the kids. Because it's one thing if I drove my ch child, but, you know, who's driving the children and and he's in, in his own words he said um he'd advise that that get fully vetted before if you were going to say parents drive get it fully vetted first so so bill i have a question about that there's a lot in law that i was able to find that specifies what constitutes district provided transportation and kind of what it has to be in all this other stuff. Is there really, or is, is there actually a requirement in law that if an activity is sponsored by the district that transportation has to be provided? And the reason I ask that is because I know at least some activities, it is up to the parents to transport their children to the site of the activity that is an interscholastic competition of some sort it's a question that i i think i know the answer to but i'm not I, steve would have to answer it okay uh, for sure um i know that we do have parents take children their own children they may take other children to um you know when the when there's maybe five or six kids participating in something mm -hmm. the parents transport i'm not sure if we're on solid ground on that Okay. Steve would have to advise us on that. I'm not. I'm, I'm not so I think sure we about that. We probably need to clarify that, and then maybe yeah. maybe stop asking some questions. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm not. I mean, yeah, I'm not that's answer. that's for Attorney Rob uh, again, Attorney Robinson to answer, not super. Well, I, okay, I think I think we need to ask him. Yes. Well, I think we need we need him to that to be seems present. Seems to be the single biggest cost anyway associated with anything like this is mm -hmm. the transportation. Absolutely. All right. 
my my biggest concern is you know to to use your term mrs hopes sustainability you know I, we haven't gotten any and i wouldn't have expected to get a written guarantee from anyone that we would have repeated donations beyond year one and, and as the superintendent mentioned earlier we as a district are very much concerned over the sustainability of all of our programs and I, I really hesitate to add any additional programming, uh, whether it be academic sports or, or any at this time, because of that overall concern. Um, if there's a way that we can maybe be creative to allow for these kids to play somehow, um, um, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's why we looked for donations that were sustainable, like Amy from the fishbowl. She there's, actually there's she, no guarantee that any of these businesses. Well, I know Gilbert's has been around for decades, but no guarantee you that it's truly going to be sustainable. It, you, you don't have it in writing. You don't have a contract. Well, and I think that's the next step that we were talking about because Amy herself was going to like LLC and. Um, and the um, Concord Electric to see if they would do that and put it in writing um, because they know that there needs to be that sustainability for those donations and that's why you know we're very close to getting that and being in route and, and I do know with talking with Amy that she has agreed that it's going to be sustainable and like I said her child's not even old enough to play and she's willing to, to continue that donation and have it be a sustainable donation. So like if, if we do um, you know, continue to investigate whether or not we can call it maybe a middle school club team and have all of the parents transport the way we do now with Tivert and you know, youth soccer, um, if, if it's making sure we have liability as well as signing a waiver, then all the donations, the sustainable donations that we do have, we, can, we don't need to put them towards busing. It can go towards other things. Else. When when does the season begin? When would you have to have a definite answer? The second week of September. I think the first scheduled um, division game is September uh, 11th or 12th. But if it's if it's a scrimmage, and again, this is you know we got to get clarification from the Interscholastic League and also approval, is if it's a scrimmage, then it's really at the. Uh, the team the decision of the team the team when do yes. they want to play a scrimmage exactly. game so it's the, they got their schedule and you know they've got one game you know maybe they play two games a week and one week they got one game mm -hmm. then they would say okay we'll play Tiverton on such and such so it's uh, it's a good question when does it start but it's since if we wouldn't be in the league right. there's I think there might be some more flexibility okay. as far as right. time scheduling. goes thank you very much Thank you, Dr. Larkin. Did I turn it off again? <laughs> okay. You're on. Okay, this is something I'm very passionate about. Not emotional, but passionate. It's a big difference. Um, all my kids went here and played sports. My daughter could kick anybody's, you know what, against any guy. She ever, I don't have any question about that. Mine too. She went all through college and the same as yours. But anyway, I'm on the Tiverton um, Health and Wellness Chair and also Tiverton Prevention. And I know this is called a protective factor. And anything we can do to keep the children safe and supervised between three and six when houses are empty because people are working is amazing. I think there's a lot of work been done to this. I agree with Mrs. Farnworth and Mr. Eric, I know. And we can't have, we're not saying we'll have it passed this year. We're telling you honestly, with a dollar more, we don't have any money. But if parents are willing to come forward and do all this work and get these donations, as you said, it's not just from a parent, because if they go from eighth to ninth, you've lost that, that money. So I think this is a wonderful idea, and there's questions also from Mr. Eric on whether it's a scrimmage or whatever, or if we can even be allowed to do it. But I would support this after all those questions are pending, but letting you know that we can't commit to another year after. You know, we, we did the others, and I'm really happy about it, as you said, the basketball and the track. And many people have called me asking me why we don't have many more things after school. I said, we have a lot more than we did when my children were there, which is good. We really do, and I'm really proud of this district for working so hard. But you have worked very hard, and this is a very good proposal. So pending all those other questions, I, I would support this. But as we say, just for, just for the year, if you can get the money, because we all know we don't have any money. Everybody's looking under. The, 
one of the key questions, obviously, assuming approval comes from the Interscholastic League, the, the, the big question, as Dr. Larkin pointed out, in my opinion, is the busing question, transportation. Obviously, if you know it comes to pass that yes, private transportation is an option. Obviously, that solves some problems. You know, as far as making the program run for this year, um, I agree with Mrs. Black that it should be if you do consider it one year and see how it goes. Um, but I would recommend to the committee that we get the answers to those questions, including having Attorney Robinson come to our next meeting, which I think is the 12th, 11th or 12th, regular schedule meeting, yep. and have him explain, answer questions from the committee, folks from the audience, because again, I don't, you know, he's, the, he's our attorney and he would know for sure and answer specific questions because we get some kind of general questions, but, you know, he's the, he's the man. And by then we'll also have an answer from the trust. We'll call the trust and see what they advise us on um, as well. So could we vote to give a tentative approval? I so would, the motion on the floor is really to approve moving forward. It is not allocating any funds. I think that's a I would, uh, I would yeah. recommend that you allow me to come back with the answers to the questions. But it's up to you. Uh, because you need to hear what Attorney Robinson has to say. Because I don't know what the answers are to those questions. Okay. Any members of the public would like to speak? Mendes? I have one. Could you come to the podium, please? Sorry. Uh, one thing right now, we have one guy outside, as everybody knows, to do the fields. He spends every week 10 hours lining what we have. It'll probably be another hour, hour and a half tops to redo a soccer field. We did not buy the paint this year for that field. We bought just enough paint for us to do what we have. Okay. Each five-gallon pail is two hundred dollars or more, and that's going to be done on a weekly basis. Just and for practice. You have to let us yeah, we don't need the, the lines for you practice. You don't have any field. No, there you can go with a blank field. It, we don't need it because it, all the games are scheduled. Hopefully, according how about, to Mr. How about for your practices? They don't need lines. Okay. They don't and use lines that, over that, at uh, Town Farm. Issue. They Plus, Mr. Everywhere. Murray would have to sign off on his baseball field be in line for soccer. Which, Who would have to sign off, please? And which I don't think he's been asked. I'm sorry? Put that in the questions we don't want to ask. No, I said uh, Mr. Murray would have to sign off on having his baseball field line for soccer. Okay. Yeah, and I, I don't think, it, there's it, no, we don't think we have was, a need for it. It was good enough that, you know, he was allowed, because that field that gets very wet and can get chewed up very easily, so to even allow practice there is, is, is yeah. what I would consider a big, a big achievement. Uh, because that's usually, you know, it's like Fenway Park. Nobody uses it except for the when the season starts. Um, I, I do have one more question. It, it just came to mind. You, we're talking about the baseball field immediately behind the middle school. Mm -hmm. practice. The practice field. Excuse me. We're talking lower field here at the high school for practice. Oh. That's where our varsity baseball team plays. Oh. No, no, no. We're talking uh, at the baseball field. He's that, then where is he going to practice? He practices on the upper football, uh, with the upper soccer uh, field at the middle school. That lower field for the left. Yes. He doesn't practice on the baseball field. No. no. Oh, no. I apologize. He's I was wrong. Where they do the I was. Uh, I apologize. Yeah. I thought he was giving up his big field. No. Oh. So that okay. leads me to a new question. What about Tiger Cubs? Your kids are outside but we don't on nice days. Also. No, not, not yeah. always outside. Yeah, on nice days the in the fall. Yeah. We use the top. We go wherever they use the top, but in addition to that, the area where the baseball diamond is, they have no need to be there. They're going to be in the grassy area all the way in the back, which is a, a lot of land for them to practice soccer. They wouldn't be anywhere near the diamond and or the left grass field. It's not, area. It's, it's not a soccer area. They won't be on the dirt. No. Okay. Way in the back, right. Way back. To the fence okay. Area. It's yes. been a while. I'll have to take a ride. <laughs> well, my kids went to Tiger Cubs, so I, I was there every day <laughs> to pick them up. So I know the field. My very memory's well. getting hazy. <laughs> okay. Any other public comments, members of the audience? We have a motion to approve going forward. So I'm gonna um, I again want to point out that this is not an allocation of funds. It's really just an approval to go forward. And I agree with Mr. Rerick that 
if we approve the motion, we do need to have a number of questions answered, including the issues around transportation, as well as a really very firm, detailed budget of where the money is coming from and what the expenses that that budget is going to meet. Because again, we are not allocating any funds to support this. Having said that, I would encourage us to sort of bifurcate our thinking a little bit here and think of things as short term and long term. And I think at this point we have a short term um, opportunity that appears to have been well thought out and funding seems to have been identified so it is not a cost to the district. And in that instance, I agree wholeheartedly with Mrs. Black that this is a, uh, a uh, what do you call it, a protective? It's called a protective factor. Yeah. Uh, that, that really involvement in sports is very important, uh, not just for the fun of it, but also for the um, character development and the, um, the support uh, of the child. Um, and <clears throat> I'd rather really try and fail than not try at all. So I think that I would encourage supporting the motion to move forward. Again, understanding that we really have a lot of questions still to answer, mm -hmm. but at least we can kind of move things forward. Um, the second thing I think we really need to examine is the long-term uh, issues of uh, both the budget, uh, and I think we need to start to ask for what we need uh, to educate well-rounded um, young people, and we need to make that case, and uh, we need to continue to uh, meet the challenge of uh, people who will uh, try and thwart us in that effort uh, by finding things in the charter that are not there. Um, but we also need to look at things that might be um, valuable uh, alternatives, such as intramural sports, um, and again, other sports that uh, I think would really benefit all our children. Um, in that regard, that might be something that we could look at more globally with our new finance committee to sort of say, well, if we're gonna have these sports, and again, sometimes it's one year where you are you know, have a lot of enthusiasm and we recognize that it's very valuable, but as probably everybody in this room can attest, it's a relatively small group of people that show up to actually continue to support things. Um, and so that can drop off. And we really need to sort of say, well, what is sustainable um, both for uh, middle school sports and, and uh, our budget and, and what it's gonna cost us. So uh, having said that, I, I would uh, uh, support the motion. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's any other comments or discussion or questions, I'm happy to entertain those. So the motion would be to approve pending resolution of open items. Correct. And with no commitment of funds, and it would be a one-year trial. Correct. And then I'll report back on the 12th. We'll mm -hmm. have Attorney Robinson, and we'll have... But we can move we'll forward. Have, right, and we can move forward. Yes. We can pursue it further, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? No. All those in favor? Opposed? Very good. Okay. Thank you very much Thank for you. all your work. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Number 10, announcements. Um, I only have one, which is that I received communication from the Charter Review Commission asking us to meet with them on September 7th. Uh, unfortunately, that will be before we have our next scheduled meeting, and it was not posted to discuss uh, budget or uh, charter proposals with them at this meeting so we don't have the opportunity to discuss that. I have put in a call to Mr. Coulter but have not yet heard back from him asking him to, th this is a three month process that they are um, going through asking different uh, boards and commissions and, and other entities for their um, suggestions. Uh, so I'm hoping to get a later date. Uh, if not, um, I think open meetings prevents us actually from making any suggestions to them unless we have another meeting. And I'm hard put to find a time when we can have another meeting between now and September 7th. Um, so I am hoping to reschedule that. Uh, and I would like to put on the agenda for September 12th. Uh, and I will forward to you uh, the uh, kind of form that they want us to use in making proposals so that we can spend a fair amount of time on the 12th actually hashing out what we think would be important uh, proposals to the Charter Review Commission. 
if uh, they come back and say, no, you can't have no other time than September 7th, we will need to try and schedule a meeting or say, sorry, we can't, as a committee, at least make such proposals. They won't say that's all I They have three months. One would like to think that they would. I, they they have, have a year, don't they? <laughs> yeah, I hope, well, they, I'll, I'll send the letter, but it was basically saying that they are going through this three month process of, hmm. of soliciting suggestions. Um, but I think uh, sort of t just to understand that on the 12th, we really need to think a lot about uh, charter review and, um, you know, everybody should bring their proposals. Will there be, uh, I know this is, are there, are there forms for us to use? Yes, there is. There will I, will, I will forward it to you. Okay. I think it was attached to the email I received from them. Okay. And, and it's basically, um, I'll kind of give you the gist of the letter. It was, you know, say the charter should do X, say why you sh the charter should do X, and uh, that's that. It's not a debate of anything they've taken up so far. It's not a debate of the merits of what, you know, they're not going to, they may ask some questions, but they're not going to sort of say, well, you know, that's a really great idea or that's a really crazy idea or. And our input would be limited to school. That's less clear to me. I had that same question. Um, I think that there are certainly parts of the charter that are not labeled as being part of the governance of the schools, but certainly impact us. So I think anything that has to do with um, the budget, you know, we are the, bar the biggest part of the budget. 1218. 1218. Um, there's actually not that much in the charter about how the school committee works. Okay. Yeah, and I don't you know I mean there's we've all seen some proposals that people have made um, but that would be you know sort of their proposal I, I think the stuff that's in the charter as it exists about the school district doesn't you know I, I don't have see any huge problems with it right at the moment okay but it's worth our while to <laughs> read it <laughs> and see what what does it really say yeah Okay. Um, you all set with that? Yep. I've been, um, a Superintendent Rarick forwards to us the Commissioner of Education's field memos, I think pretty mm -hmm. much on a weekly basis. A and uh, I read them regularly. Um, I took special interest in the one we got last week, and I said to myself, you know, I, I think we need to be discussing this, some of these items. Uh, here at the school committee level, at least for, if for no other reason, for awareness of how our district plays into some of these things. Okay. For example, uh, you know, last week's spoke to snow day guidance. That's a hot yeah, topic on the state level yeah, right now. Um, they had a lengthy discussion over individual learning plans. Um, they spoke of a mental health program for middle and high school students. They also um, had, had some guidance on determining residency for schools, and this is just, you know, I, I just jotted a few of these things down. There were more, and I'm thinking that, you know, perhaps maybe once a month we de we dedicate some time just for discussion of those types of items. Yeah. So we made any uh, sort of, uh, maybe we're kind of getting outside announcements here, but. Um, Mrs. Polish would not be approved. No, I know. I, I hear her in my. <laughs> <laughs> My little electrode is going off. Um, <laughs> are we going to take up the issue of uh, these virtual school days? That is, that would, <coughs> that, that seems a huge morale, Again, frankly, that's something me. that's on, you know, on my to-do list to bring to the committee yeah. to determine right. it, it would be to policy subcommittee. But as the, the RAG uh, memo said, w there was still waiting on guidance from them, yeah. you know, on they got to tell us what they think it should look like and then we can take it up yeah you know but I, I when I talked to Ms. Farnworth about that I think it's a good idea I mean we do talk about these things not necessarily in the order that they come out of a ride memo but during the course of our business or in our reports you know we do address but I think it's a good idea to you know when something 
Yep. Like I think that. we're all and reading so, it. But you and right. And one of the like, other issues, you know, is the reporting, yeah. uh, DCYF like, reporting. You know, that's. I read it until I get really mad issue. and then I stop reading it. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I can put an item on the agenda, DCYF issues, and this, just list them. DCYF I'm sorry, I had DCYF on the brain because that's what Hopefully we don't have too many. No, well, I hope we have none of those, but um, ride topics. Okay. The ride issues, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. And that then we can just good. speak to them freely and not necessarily have an outcome, but just have a conversation yeah. on them. Okay. All right. Anything else? Thank you. If I may, I just want to um, make sure everyone knows school starts soon, and um, the that teachers would be are Thursday back. In they do start folks Thursday. Didn't know. <laughs> um, that the teachers are um, back, and um, we are lucky enough to have a lot of community partners come out, um, including many. Actually, we had the uh, chief legal counsel, the administrative lead, um, the head of training, all from the Department of DCYF, um, children, youth, and families come out and do some training. Um, for our teachers, we had community action agencies, we had um, health care, community health care providers, we had um, the Rhode Island Department of Education um, representatives come out, as well as representatives from the U.S. Department of Education on Civil Rights, um, all here um, providing professional learning opportunities for our teachers. And there was also time for um, collaboration, planning, discussion, around the theme of um, supporting students' individual needs. And we also had sessions on individual learning plans, which <laughs> uh, you just referenced. So um, the teachers are very engaged, and um, it's nice to have them all back and ready for kids. Okay. Thank you. Good. All right, I'll entertain a motion under Rhode Island General Law 4246582, session pertaining to collective bargaining, Council 94, NEA administrators. I'll make a motion. All those in favor? Yes. 